Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video's shout out goes to Guthrie6961. Thank you for your continued support. And we're gonna, this, the title of this video, you know, driving the narcissistic abuser crazy, it comes from a question we're gonna answer today. Because I saw this and I said, you know what? There's a lot of talk about this right now, and I will go ahead and tell y'all something. We don't have to do anything at all to drive them crazy. First and foremost, they drive themselves crazy. That's something that we learn later on as we continue to grow and heal and get farther up on that spiritual ladder. And we realize just not only how much we actually do to ourselves. Hello, move that moot in our own eye kind of thing. Mm -hmm. As we go through those stages of self-reflection and rediscovery and unlearn all of the bad behaviors and things like that because it takes time don't beat yourself up don't beat yourself up we say that often for a reason okay god god no he's got this okay but here's the question it said how do you drive a narcissistic abuser crazy now it's like i said you you don't have to do anything it drives them crazy when we're just who we are that's it. Bottom line. You just be you. And that's what will drive them nuts. Because the more that you discover about you and who you are in Christ. And you just be you. Be that beautiful, unique, wonderful you that God created. And there's nothing that will drive a narcissistic abuser crazier than that. Okay, it's just, it will. And a lot of time, here's something that I want y'all to also keep in mind. Is that the fact that they they already drive themselves crazy, okay? They're riddled with all of those demon spirits. And I'm talking about the mid-level, high-level, and low-level. I mean, they're, they're okay, because we have now come to the conclusion in this continued research and observation that most all... Okay, as far as we know now, most all of your full-blown narcissistic abusers are the walking Jezebel. And they're already driving themselves crazy anyway, okay? So, you don't have to do anything to drive them crazy. They do it to themselves. You just be you, alright? That's it. Whatever it is God put in you, do it. Yeah, that's it. That's all we're supposed to be doing anyway, is doing God's will. Well, he put everybody, when he put his chosen one on this planet, okay, he gave everybody a purpose, like I speak about in the previous video. He give he gives everybody a purpose. And when you discover what that is, that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. And I know, easier said than done with ignoring the, you know, the shenanigans from these abusers. And yes, they're out there, unfortunately. Remember how God tells us that the enemy is always seeking whom he can devour. He's always roaming about. And that's, that's talking about the spiritual realm. Yes, starts here. Alright, the spiritual realm. And the enemy knows that too. That's why he likes to trip everybody up. And put a bunch, try to put a bunch of garbage in there, uh huh, so that it makes it more difficult for some to retain God in their knowledge. All right, that's yeah. See, ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, the enemy thinks he's sneaky. All right, and yes, there for a while he was pretty sneaky, but now we see. Okay, we see through them. So we're gonna dive into the second part. Just know that you all. That to driving the narcissistic abuser crazy, you do not have to physically or, you know, you don't have to physically do or say anything. Just be you, okay? That's it. Be the unique individual that God created. That's all we got to do. All right, everyone? But here's the second part because I want to share a red flag that will help you going forward on spotting a full-blown narcissistic abuser. Now, keep in mind, what is the one thing they like to do best? Yes, play, act, and pretend. 
Alright, so part of the vigilance and awareness that we'll develop is being able to spot or rather, especially in the online world, it takes a little while to develop, so don't beat yourself up if you haven't gotten here yet. So I'm bringing this to you for food for thought and to help you, okay, as you are navigating the online world and things like that because they are everywhere online. Like I've said in some previous videos about their behaviors online, but now we're going to dive into how your intuition plays a massive role in detecting these full-blown, these narcissistic abusers online. Because, remember, they're vultures, okay? They really are. They roam about, and, and I mean, they're just always constantly trying to seek supply, a.k.a. someone that they can control and abuse. So they're always going to be searching the internet, looking for a, a potential supply, okay? And the one thing we learn to do is to show them that we're not going to make a good supply. And they do go away. Yes, they do, okay? I'm, not, I'm talking about, the you know, like a recent one, okay? Because I just completed a re Well, I didn't, all right? I'm not going to take all the credit because God helped me close that case study pretty daggone quick. But... How it came about was I could sense the need for control through the way that this person was communicating, okay? It started with on a comment section on a post in one of the social sites. And what happened was I could sense immediately, all right? Because common sense and logic coupled with the intuition is very powerful, Okay, it is. It, that's part of that power package that Jesus gives us. All right. So what happens is I was like, okay, all right. And you, you got to remember, everyone, you will get to this point. All right. You will get to the point where you are completely healed and stuff like this is not going to phase you. You'll spot it and you'll either do one or two things. You know, God will show you what to do with it, all right? You will either respond and turn it into a case study, or you will simply ignore it, okay? With whatever God tells you to do. But by now, y'all know that God, part of his assignment for me is to turn it into a case study. Because I also wanted to, I wanted to test my own level of awareness as well. See, that's, we're allowed to do that. Alright, in fact, that's what God told me to do. Because I was like, okay, I was like, hmm, gonna side this, you know, test the spirit. Okay, remember, we're supposed to test the spirit, always. Alright, and so we turn it into a case study. Because I knew as soon as anyone tells you to either follow or send a request or whatever, when they could just as easily have done that first, remember the number one thing here that narcissistic abusers are deathly afraid of besides exposure is rejection. See, empaths, we learn that rejection is God's protection, okay? But the narcissistic abusers are extremely afraid of being rejected. So that's why they do that. If they come out you and they want you to make the first move, that is a sign, okay, that is, that, I mean, I would, that's a red flag, okay, sign not the right word, because remember, God tells us, everybody looking for a sign, you shall not find one, so this is a red flag to watch out for, when they could have easily have followed or sent you the request, you know, first, but they didn't, because they fear rejection, and so that right there signal their extreme need for control and power. And the rest of the combo was basically centered around trying to figure out the best way to chat, okay? Oh, that was an interesting little experience there. I will go ahead and tell you. But eventually, I was like, okay, fine. You know, so we reached an agreement. And I'm like, all right, so let the fun begin, right? Oh, my goodness. It's all about exposing the behaviors so that we can share with others these red flags to watch out for. 
And that would be one of the very first ones right there, everyone, is that something they could have easily have done first, but wants to request you to make the first move. That's also part of them, well, out of fear of rejection, but that's also part of them trying to test a boundary. All right, they're trying to test whether or not you have a boundary. And so, this is why I caution anyone to do the whole case study thing unless you are 100% healed and that is what God has assigned you to do. Because that, when you, if you're turning it into a case study, all right, and you go, okay, because that's what, that's what God told me to do. At the same time, it was to test the level of awareness. Let's see where we're at. I wanted to gauge, okay, that's kind of a way of gauging your own progress in a lot of ways and see that's the thing when God put that on my spirit and he's like okay because he wanted to show me something he wanted me to teach myself okay and him teach me and to know where we're at and I can tell you it was not even 72 hours okay that's how short that is perhaps well no I tell you that'll be the second shortest case study because I shared that one that I had when I was in a school function and where he came up and he was just like pushy, pushy, pushy. And it's like trying to move really, 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 really fast. And that's always another red flag to never, ever, 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 ever forget people. All right. Because that is huge right there. And remember, like we say often, the older they get, the more desperate they get. And so they will do that. All right, but they're testing of the boundary because you want to be very mindful of that because you know that's what, okay, if that's what you are calling has a part, you know, if that's part of your calling, all right, that's a better way to put it, if that's part of your calling to do that because otherwise it can trigger and we don't want any of y'all to get triggered. That's why I'm saying I don't recommend anyone doing it unless you are completely healed and that is what God has you doing. Because what they do when, okay, yeah, when the red flags start popping, those red flags can trigger you. And we don't, we don't want you to relapse or anything like that. But I'll bring the results to you all because I don't get triggered, all right? <laughs> Just, uh, that, my goodness, no. That's why I'm saying it is completely 100% possible. You will heal. Uh, oh, yeah. You will heal completely. You will know. Uh, you'll recognize triggers and it'll get to a point where you know you control your own emotional reaction, okay? And you will get there. So hang in there. Many of you super empaths, you know what I'm talking about because you're there, all right? It, it just it takes time, all right? And patience as always, as always. But there you go right there. If they're extremely pushy, all right, that's also a sign of them needing control, okay? And then they want you to make the first move because out of their fear of rejection and they want to test a boundary to see if they can control the year. You see the pattern here? Anytime that they come off like that, you, your intuition, you'll sense it, even in the online world, through that spiritual energy transfer. Because that's immediately what I sensed when I saw that message. And I went, hmm. And this has happened a few times over on Quora, too, just so you all know. And this is how the, most of the time they get themselves blocked when they do this. Okay? Because I could see through it. Alright? But this one in particular on another site was going about it a slightly different way. And that's when God was like, alright, we'll learn something new or not. Okay, but most of all, learning about our own level of awareness. Okay, because hey, I, I got to do that. I can't bring it to you all <laughs> if I don't. Okay, if I don't check myself also. All right, it's all about uh huh. Yes, making sure that before I get the information out to you. Okay, you know, it just that's how it works. Okay, we want to have everything in place. But overall, anything that is, let's just say, illustrating. It's the best word that comes to mind at the moment. Illustrating any kind of need for control. Okay? You sense it. That's your red flag right there. And your intuition will, it'll, it'll, that radar will perk. It'll be like, hmm, hmm, okay. 
And many of us, we just typically block it, okay? Just, there you go, quick recap. They want you to make the first move, right? Or they ask you to kindly follow them back because they like to have a chat with you. Yeah, mm -mm. that doesn't fly. And don't forget, a lot of narcissistic abusers are spammers and scammers. Remember, well, I mean, they are con men after all, and con women, all right? They are deceitful as all get out. So we always want to be mindful of that. And that's part of breaking the trauma bond, okay? Breaking the trauma bond to the world, as always, first and foremost, because... Again, for those who need a reminder and for those who have not heard it yet, that break, breaking that trauma bond to the world, it'll make it extremely difficult and for the most part impossible to get trauma bonded to another abuser. And that little bit that I just shared right there illustrates exactly. See, there's no way he was going to get me trauma bonded because I already saw the red flag. Okay? There was absolutely no way. So this is why we can't stress the importance of red flags enough. If you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to reach out. You know where to find me. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you in Jesus' name. Amen.